each step along the way. Not just the officer, but his manager that called me. The internal uh, affairs department. Some, something's going on, I'm telling you, he's... They all trashed everything and said everything was justified. He's defeated, I, I'm really hoping. I hadn't done anything wrong. This police officer in San Antonio, Texas stopped Alex Schott while he was driving home from a work trip and ended up ransacking his car to look for drugs. My name is Alex Schott. I live in Houston, Texas with my wife and two young sons. Police are supposed to keep us safe, but they should also be held accountable when they violate our rights. Let's roll the tape and see whether this officer complied with the Fourth Amendment. We'll use a reasonable suspicion meter to help us out. More on that later. Hey, how you doing, brother? Hey, my name is uh, Joel. I'm with the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Uh, the only reason I'm stopping you is when I was watching over there, you were drifting over that fog line, but I just want to make sure everything's okay. Police can't just stop and detain you to fish around for evidence that you might be doing something wrong. The Fourth Amendment requires that they have reasonable suspicion, objective evidence that you've committed a crime. Otherwise, they have to let you go. Uh, the only reason I'm stopping you is when I was watching over there, you were drifting over that fog line. Here, the officer said the only reason he stopped Alec was because he was drifting over the fog line. But this is a video from Alec's personal dash cam before he was stopped. I don't see any drifting there, do you? Because we're still in fishing expedition territory, the stop and everything after it violates the Fourth Amendment. Hey, I'm gonna have you step out and sit in my passenger seat while I do your warning, okay? Thanks a lot, man. When I was pulled over and asked to get out of the car, I was immediately confused because it was not a standard practice from what I've normally experienced with the license and registration process. Um, I was really astounded and very uneasy. At this point, the officer orders Alec into his patrol car so that he can issue a warning. But if lane drifting was the only reason for the stop, the officer was required to deal with that violation promptly and then let Alec go. The officer's body cam shows that he ran Alec's license plate before pulling him over. And the incident report shows that the officer ran a background check on Alec less than a minute after they entered the patrol car. Alec has never been in trouble with the law, so the checks would have come back clean. At this point, the officer was constitutionally required to issue a warning and let Alec go, but he didn't. The officer interrogated him for over 10 minutes about the purpose of his trip and whether there were illegal drugs or large amounts of cash in his car. Alec calmly and truthfully explains that he's driving home from a work trip and there's nothing illegal in his car. In other words, he acts exactly the way you'd expect any normal law-abiding citizen to act. Where was your customer at? Damn, how far is that from here? What hotel did you stay at? When was the last time you came down this way? You like Houston? So here, your name is Scott, S-C-H-O-C-T. Oh, shot, I mean, I saying, on. And what's in your address? Yep, that's correct. And date of birth? Has this been your truck from the beginning? What year is it? It's horrible. What's your phone number, sir? You live in a house or an apartment? And then what was it you were working on with your uh, your customer here? So you brought out the equipment to him? So you can just kind of go there and tell him about it. Did you go over there with anybody else? Have you ever been in trouble with anything? Is your wife? Is that your mom? Do you have anything in your vehicle that you're not supposed to have? Do you have any marijuana in the vehicle? Any cocaine? Mm -hmm. Any heroin? Uh, any THC oil? Do you see that? Dates? Anything of that nature? Okay. Any types of uh, uh, methamphetamine, being crystal or liquid? Any pills that aren't prescribed to you? Any hallucinogens, being THC oil, THC wax, anything like that? Do you have any large sums of money over $10,000? Do you have any types of anything illegal? Has anybody asked you to carry anything in your vehicle? And are you the only person that's uh, driven this vehicle for the last 48 hours? Okay. We're now over 10 minutes into the stop and our meter is still frozen in fishing expedition territory. We're about to learn what's really going on. What I am is I'm on what's called a criminal interdiction unit. So I don't have to deal with all that crap. I don't give tickets, I give warnings. And the main reason is I sit on the side of the highway and I'm out here looking for, cause it's bad out here. So I'm out here looking for big uh, human smuggling, drug smuggling and all those things like that. So. That's what I'm doing. Here the officer admits that the stop was never really about traffic. It was about finding big shit. That's a problem. When police decide in advance that you must be some kind of criminal, whether a drug dealer or anything else, 
The result is a conspiratorial mindset under which police can spin anything you do as suspicious. Acting nervous? Suspicious. Acting too calm? Also suspicious. Direct eye contact? No eye contact? Talking too much? Not talking enough? All suspicious. There really are no limits to what police will argue in an effort to get around the Constitution. Would you allow me to search your vehicle? Okay. When he asked to search my car, I told him no. I knew I'd done nothing wrong, and I shouldn't have to explain why I shouldn't be treated like a criminal. So what I'll do um, is we have a canine pretty close, so I'm gonna have the canine come out and do a walk around your vehicle. That way it'll go quicker. Um, but just, I, I have some reasons to believe that there might be something in your vehicle. I've been wrong before, but there's just some things I'm seeing that makes me want to go a little further with the investigation, okay? So that's that's what we're gonna do. I'll wait for a canine. The canine will walk around the outside of your vehicle. If it alerts to anything, then we will do a search of the vehicle. Alec refuses consent to search his car, not because he's hiding anything, but because these sorts of searches can be extremely intrusive and even damage your property. We're now far beyond the bounds of a legal traffic stop, but the officer claims to have seen some things that make him want to keep going. So he doubles down. He calls a drug dog to the scene to see if that will give him an excuse to search Alec's car. Okay, so he got a he got a positive alert on your driver's side door. Is there anything anything small that you know of? I'm gonna have you sit in the back seat while I search. Um, I'm not gonna put handcuffs on you or nothing. Right, you're, but you are detained because of the positive alert. If we don't find nothing in there, then you'll be good to go, man. Okay. You have any questions? All right. Yeah, it's by the number. The drug dog finally arrives, and the officer claims he gives a positive alert. That means the canine officer thinks the dog can smell drugs in the car. If the stop had been legitimate up to this point, then the alert might have given the officers probable cause to search Alec's car. But the drug dog never should have been called in the first place because again, there was no basis for the stop or for suspecting Alec of a crime. So the positive alert couldn't have cured the constitutional problems. It could only make them worse by extending an already illegitimate stop. I don't, I don't know anything about like how the dogs work, but. You know, he wanted to get in there. He, he sat hard. I tried walking away. He started winding your parking. As I was watching them search my car from the back of a squad car, I felt violated, opening up the glove box, taking out my tools and my work equipment. All of my personal property was being searched through. For the next 25 minutes, the officers ransack Alec's car, opening every compartment and tossing every bag. They find work gear. They find car seats. They find Chipotle and M&M wrappers the sort of thing that any American might have in their car. The one thing they don't find is any drugs or any other evidence of crime. Okay, sir. We're done. I'm gonna give you this before I forget. Yeah, and then your warning. We took off your car seats so that we could get it under the seat. Well over an hour after Alec was pulled over for a made up traffic violation, the officer finally stopped searching his car and says he's free to leave. What's notable here is the officer's admission that he searches cars like this all the time, but rarely finds anything. Um, but like I said, I just, I try not to be a jerk about things because nine times out of 10, this is what happens, so. That's outrageous, but hardly surprising. When police target innocent people without any reason to believe they've done something wrong and gin up reasons to ransack their cars, the only ones violating the law are the officers themselves. I did everything right, and the police still treated me like a criminal. This case is about providing accountability back to the sheriff's department, not just for the stop, but the whole process afterwards for months, even internal affairs and the management who contacted me said everything was justified and that they had the right to search my vehicle. When IJ called me back and said they were moving forward with my case, it finally felt like my rights mattered. With IJ's help, Alec is filing a lawsuit to hold the officer accountable for violating his rights. Because if we the people have to follow the law, our government must follow the Constitution.